Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rebel Pro Psychic Show. I'm your host, Athena Silver. Tonight, we are getting into a deep dive and a topic all about witchcraft in old New England homes. We're going to be talking about sympathetic magic as well as protective magic and magic in all its ways that have been found in these old New England homes. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's get into it. I don't know if any of you know, but I am from New York, New York State to be exact. I'm up in one of the historic areas of New York State, um, I'm down a little bit away from the city. Our area is known for its revolutionary war houses, different historical homes, and so many different Dutch, French, and you know English style homes. So when we're talking about these old homes, we're talking about homes built in the 1700s, the 1800s, and the very early 1900s. I I live in a particular area where there's a lot of homes from all three of these eras, kind of mixed and placed with modern homes in, in its midst. So this is an exciting topic. This is all things that have been found in these old homes that pertain to witchcraft, specifically European styles of witchcraft and folk tradition. So what got me on this topic, um, for anyone who follows me on TikTok, I did a series about this old home that is in the midst of my parents' neighborhood. Um, it's this really old Revolutionary War style house Apparently, George Washington stayed there in that home for about a week. It's designated a historical site. And my parents, their house was built on what, what used to be the property for that estate and that, that house. So all sorts of weird, creepy stuff has happened in that neighborhood. But I talk about it more on my TikTok. Um, my TikTok handle is Athena underscore silver on TikTok. So check me out if you want to see the full story. But it inspired me to talk about all the things that have been found in these old homes when it comes to this sympathetic protection, offensive type of, and defensive type of magic. Um, the first one I want to talk about is witches' marks. Now, they have a long history of protection from witchcraft. So it's not even that, you know, they were worried about you know, uh, or they were witches that were inflicting these things. No, these were people trying to protect themselves with the witchcraft. I think a lot of cunning folk, um, a lot of herbal workers, and just people in general, there was a lot of hysteria back in medieval times with the Inquisition. Um, a lot of people who came over to the New World during this time, a lot of them came from Europe. A lot of them came specifically from England, where there's a rich... Celtic tradition of magic. There was a lot of Irish people who came over as well. So there was more of that Celtic influence, that pagan influence that was still alive within these cultures. Even though they did practice Christianity, they were still had a very deep tie to their folk religions and their folk spiritualities and their folk medicines and remedies. So witches' marks are part of those traditions. Now, in these old houses, that are in the new world in, in New England, you get them a lot in um, stairwells and in basements, in areas that are dark, in corners, behind doors. You'll see scratches carved into the hardwood itself, into the foundations. Um, I've seen it also painted on as well. And um, chalk, a cascadilla was used, which is like uh, powdered eggshells that have been like made hard, like come in a chalk consistency. Um, but they're they're making these symbols, a lot of them are, you know, alchemical, geometric, esoteric shapes. There's a lot of stars, there's a lot of crosses. Now, these crosses, some of them are of the esoteric tradition, some of them are of the Celtic tradition, some of the, like the really old prehistoric crosses. Um, and some of them are of Christianity origins, Christian origins. So these, all of these were carved 
to repel evil spirits, to repel witchcraft and sorcery placed against the people in the house, which is the family members. Um, you can find them um, painted on barns throughout like uh, Pennsylvania and, and where a lot of uh, Dutch immigrants had settled in the new world. Um, there's a very rich tradition called powwow out there. And it's, you know, it's something to get into. We're not going to talk about it today because it's, it's not on this particular path of witchcraft. It, it has a different origin. But it, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Drop a comment below if you want me to do an episode about powwow. It's not something that I practice, but I can see if I can bring someone on as a guest to have a real conversation about it. So let me know in the comments. Now, anytime that there was a perceived portal within the house, which is doors, windows, passages from one space to the next, these are these liminal spaces, you'll find a lot of these geometric carvings um, on the wood frames and on the, the window shutters and behind them. Um, but these are to strengthen and protect the boundaries and, and it's baneful magic, you know, they're establishing their protections and their their boundary spaces for the home. This is all very close to home, um, like traditional folk magic and remedies that have been employed for for millions, uh, you know, thousands of years. You know, um, these are things that, that were brought over. Another one that I want to talk about. This was used as a hex sign and to ward off hexes. It's called the daisy wheels. Um, with daisy wheels, they're used to, to stave off infection, sickness, misfortune, um, the evil eye, mother ojo, you know, um, it was, and you'll see them a lot in very like European style homes and car, you know, they're carved and they look like a wind, like they look like a flower, you know, sometimes you'll see one daisy wheel, sometimes you'll see a daisy wheel chain. Sometimes you'll see other geometric patterns incorporated with the daisy wheel, but they're typically there, you know, alongside like, like V's and W symbols and X's, O's and triangles. There's so many different symbols associated with the witch's carvings. They're all very unique. They're unique to the family. They're unique to the practitioner. They're unique to the home. They're unique to the spirits that are in the home. So it's very, um, it's very intimate, this type of practice with setting up the protections in your home. So um, if you guys get a chance to look into that further, trust me, you'll never see the same one twice. It's, it's very interesting. Um, I also wanna talk about what happens when a lot of these uh, houses have been dismantled and demolished and remodeled in the past you know, couple of decades. They have found like dead animal bones in a lot of cases. There was an article out recently in the past month about a home uh, that was built in the 30s and they have found it was lined not with insulation, but with animal bones and herbs and sacred medicinal items and objects. Um, some people have found shoes. Shoes are have a huge protection origin um, when it comes to European witchcraft, um, a traditional European witchcraft. It's been found in other types of witchcraft as well. Um, the, you'll find shoes a lot in ceilings, basements, attics, crawl spaces, doorways, over windows. Um, sometimes they will be children's shoes. Sometimes they will be shoes of everybody. Sometimes they're only left feet. <laughs> sometimes they're only right. It, it really, it, it it differs with the practice and the tradition it's coming from. Um, it's thought to confuse the, the evil spirits that come across it. They look at these shoes and they can feel the essence of the person who wore them on the shoe and will unleash the spiritual attack on the shoe, thinking that it's its target, the person, but it's not. So it's a cunning little trick to get around having um, these spells affect your person. They're affecting your items before it can affect you. So it's kind of a cunning little way that they, they worked out and put together and embedded in their defenses at home. It was also a big sign for fertility and for bringing fortune into the home. Um, you would have these shoes that you found herbs and other items stuffed in the, the toe of the shoe and hidden within a wall space. 
Um, and sometimes they were put specifically over the front door so that um, when every time the door was open, a current of good energy and good fortune, fertility, happiness, and hope could be brought in to the home and into the larger space with every person who came through that threshold. Um, this was serious business back then. You know, you could even have people that specialize in this type of home defense. Um, unfortunately, through the inquis inquisitions that happened in Europe at the time, a lot of these practices and practitioners were burned at the stake, unfortunately, or hanged or other horrible things happened to them due to their knowledge and their folk practices being deemed, you know, irreligious or, or blasphemous or against God, whatever it may be. Even though that these types of magics for quite a long time were viewed as okay, you know, as anti-sorcery as counteractive magic, you know, magic that was protective, that saved that saved off um, the witch craze and these attacks and hexes against witches. Not saying that they don't happen. They for sure happen. There's a lot of people out there throwing a lot of stuff. But back then it was very, it was very close to what we had in the eighties with Santanic panic. It was along those lines, maybe even hyped up more so. Um, well, it was because it was to the point where people were getting hurt and, and being in prison and stuff because of it. Um, it's unfortunate that this happened, but luckily these traditions have been saved through these old homes and through word of mouth and, you know, teaching the generations that come after us. This is why it's so important for us to continue these traditions because their cultural heritage you know, it's it's spiritual knowledge and wisdom, and it, there's a lot of things that we've lost. So it's up to us as stewards of this information and this knowledge to learn more about it, to have people that study it, and to maintain and retain the information so that we may pass it up. So we all have to do our part here with learning about all these spiritual things. That's what I'm going to talk about is arguably my favorite. Now, if you're from New England, if you're from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, you know, Vermont, all the way up where there was a big presence early on, you're going to be familiar with witches' bottles. Um, there are so many people that have done remodeling and looked up into chimneys or into rafters and found these old bottles with like sharp objects like razor blades, broken knives, um, like human pee, <laughs> human excrement, uh, peppers, nails, pins, fingernails, hair, um, broken bones, a lot of broken things in these bottles. If you ever come across one of these bottles, do not open it. Do not open it. Place it back where you found it. That was put there for purpose. Um, it is believed that these bottles would stave off these evil spirits. The evil spirits would come through and get trapped in these objects and not able to affect the person or the people in the homes. Same thing goes for with witchcraft that is thrown within the home or to a particular target in the home. These bottles would serve as like a filter so that the wicked energy, the malintent, the malicious energy would get trapped within these bottles and within these cursed, baneful objects. Um, this was really common during the period of like the 1400s to like the 1700s. That's when a lot of bottles are, um, in New England are dated to around that time period. These bottles were also believed to break spells and had other medicinal purposes. Um, you'll see foot fish hooks and you'll see peppers and hot peppers and all sorts of these broken, you know, ravaging, you know, evil looking items. And they all have a purpose. They all create this vortex around the home, this, this filter, this safety net that allows anything that is thrown within the home to be protected. You find them a lot near chimneys and rafters and dark places like attics up high. Um, especially when it comes to portals and openings within the home. So like near windows, near doors, up in attics, chimneys are a big place where you find them. 
Um, and it's to really to protect any of those open air areas that spirits can come in through from the old world to the new. It is such a pleasure and so fascinating to be blessed to live in an area that has a lot of history and to learn about these different types that, of ways that people protected themselves, you know, before the modern age. Um, it, we're going to be having an awesome guest coming on this next episode. His name is Kobe Michaels. He wrote The Poison Path Herbal. It's a guide about herbal medicine and the poison path, you know, the, the left-handed path of <laughs> witchcraft. Um, I'm going to be having him on coming up the next episode. Make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe, and let everyone know all about Rebel Pro Psychic Show, especially if you're loving it. You know, make sure you comment and follow, and let me know if, if there's a topic that you guys want to hear, something that you want to learn about or you're interested in. You can also view free episodes of the Rebel Pro Psychic Show on rebelprosychicshow.com and also available on YouTube. I'm Athena Silver, I'm a professional psychic medium. I do different types of readings and spiritual services. My website is readingswithathenasilver.com. My Instagram is athena.silver. My TikTok is at athena underscore silver. My backup TikTok account is Queen Athena Silver. And my Facebook is readings with Athena Silver. Um, 